Hi, Romans here and welcome to another music review. I review every album from a viewpoint of a musician as I'm a singer, songwriter and a bass player for my own group Yako Bay. And more than three years ago we released our debut album called Pursuits in Life. What makes it unique is that it's a heavy prog rock without guitars. Instead you have drums, bass, saxophone and keyboards. You can check out all of our music videos on my YouTube channel. And in the description of all these videos you will find all the information about where is the record available. It's available on all digital platforms like Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, iTunes, Amazon, Bandcamp, but also in this digipack version of a CD with a very beautiful 20 pages long booklet. So in case you want one, all you need to do is contact me via an email on Facebook or on Instagram, or you can get one through Bandcamp as well. And today I'm going to review the new album from Iron Maiden, Senjutsu. Music review. Music review. Iron Maiden is definitely one of the biggest bands to ever exist and one of a very few to actually deserve the spot in my opinion. I've grown up listening to their music, I know them back and forth, I love their music a lot and I even did a worst to best video on my YouTube channel which I encourage you to check out. So this is their 17th studio album and their second double album. Their first one was the previous album, The Book of Souls. Uh, this is a little shorter and actually it's uh, just a couple minutes longer than The Final Frontier, which wasn't a double album, but basically since the return of Bruce Dickinson and Adrian Smith the from Brave New World, all of their albums were getting longer and longer. So in a way, this is kind of like a traditional thing. So the album has been out for like three weeks. I know I'm a bit late to the review, but if you watch my channel, you know that I'm very busy working on my second album actually finalizing it at this point and well I've heard this album 10 times as of now so let's dive right into this double album. The album opens up with the title track Senjutsu which is over 8 minutes long and this is a track penned by Adrian Smith and Steve Harris. This is a serious epic with a melodic chorus but I do have to criticize the keyboard sounds which are just horrible. I mean it's such a cheap sounding sound that I was like Whenever I was listening to this record, and they are almost everywhere, I was like, couldn't they come up with literally any other keyboard sound? The midsection is great, there are plenty of solos, and actually this track gives me a very strong A Matter of Life and Death slash The Book of Souls vibes. And the track even opens the album in a very similar way, the... If Eternity Should Fall from the previous album did. Stratego is one of the shortest tracks on the album written by Gers and Harris. This is one of the two tracks that were released before the album dropped and it gives me a pretty strong The Final Frontier vibes. This is like the most Iron Maiden song they could have written right now. I like that powerful bridge and those classical Iron Maiden triplets. The chorus is a bit cheesy though and that's why it reminds me of The Final Frontier which is in my opinion one of their worst albums. And there was a track El Dorado which, which had this like really great proggy bridge going on and then that very forced cheesy chorus trying way too hard to be run to the hills part two kind of feel the same way here the writing on the wall was the first single drop from the album penned by dickinson and smith and i really liked that overall cowboy slash wild west vibe which is a completely new sonic palette for iron maiden later on it does go in that traditional folk influenced Iron Maiden metal and the chorus is quite powerful and, 
and I also like the solo which has a tendency to become iconic in my opinion. Lost in the Lost World is one of the four tracks penned by Steve Harris alone, who wrote like more than half of the record and all of his four compositions are 10 plus minutes long. And um, the song starts acoustically and the overall atmosphere is pretty unique because they go acoustic almost never. Like there's Prodigal Sound on Killers, which is partially acoustic and the only really acoustic track Journeyman from Dance of Death, but that's it. After like two minutes, it does rock up though. It's a classic Iron Maiden epic bringing No More Lies to mind, for example. And also X Factor to a certain degree, which is something that a lot of fans seem to dig. Another shorter track on the album penned by Smith and Dickinson is Days of Future Past and this track has one of their best riffs. It is, however, criminally underused in this track because it's used only once. I mean, when you have something this unique going on, build a track around it, don't use it just once. The chorus is catchy in a traditional Iron Maiden way, kind of bringing Speed of Light to mind from their previous album, penned by the same duo. The final track on CD1 is The Time Machine, which reminds me of some of their progier epics, like for example The Legacy from A Matter of Life and Death, actually both of these tracks penned by Garrison Harris. The second disc is opened by the track Darkest Hour by Smith and Dickinson. This is a mid-tempo track. The chorus is quite good, has a lot of power, and the track brings certain variety to the record. The last three tracks are all penned by Steve Harris, the bass player and kind of the leader of the band. And uh, the track Death of the Celts starts acoustically, kind of bringing the X Factor to mind again. Even though I consider the X Factor to be the weakest album from Iron Maiden, it does have its own unique face and very unique sound. And maybe it's because I was listening to it at a very specific time in my life. And there are, of course, a couple of really great tunes. Anyway, I could almost hear Blaze Bailey singing this track. Like, if somebody told me this is a leftover from that era or from that album, I wouldn't have problems believing in that. The Parchment has an acoustic intro again, and if it wasn't for that stupid synth, this track would take me all the way back to the Power Slave days with its oriental vibe. I do have to say though that those keyboards and synth, they give this album kind of like a phase of its own compared to the previous two or three records. Uh, they don't sound good, but they make this album sound different from the other ones. Later on the track goes more into that 2020 save zone of Iron Maiden. The final track Hell on Earth has an ambient intro and then it goes into that again folk influenced Iron Maiden like metal, kind of like the track When the Wind Blows from The Final Frontier. Okay so to sum up I think that this is a good album. That's it. It's a good album. Uh, I'm very happy that Iron Maiden are still around, that they still keep making music that I guess makes them happy in the first place. I've seen a lot of people on the internet complaining that, ah, oh, this is more or less the same stuff they've done already. They don't bring anything new to the table. There's nothing really exciting. And I'm like, 
These are guys in their 60s. This is their 17th studio album. Like, what the hell do you expect from them? Do you expect them to, like, completely redefine their sound, their style? I guess not. You know, Iron Maiden, kind of like ACDC, Metallica. These are bands. These are brands rather than bands. They have their own unique style and sound, and you know what to expect from them. And whenever they release the new album, this is what you're gonna get, and this is what you should be expecting. Nothing more, nothing less. And generally, is this one of their best albums? Well, obviously not. There are so many records that are better than this. And is it a good starting point? No. Is it gonna please longtime fans? Yes, this is who the record is targeted for. The last time Iron Maiden were really pushing the formula was with A Matter of Life and Death back in 2006, which was actually their 14th studio album one of their best in my opinion, but after that they pretty much just kept it safe. But to be completely honest, if this record was released by some up-and-coming new metal band, nobody would give a shit. Nobody would give a shit about this record. So this is kind of a, the state of the art. Today, um, an average album from a famous band will get a lot of recognition as opposed to a great album by a less known band. That's just the injustice of music business, I guess. If you like this review and if you like the reviews I'm making, consider supporting me by purchasing my debut album Persids in Life. Because I include audio samples in my reviews and thus making them the most informative and entertaining to watch, I usually run a risk of getting a copyright claim, meaning that I won't be able to monetize my videos and whatever money a video earn earns goes to the original author of the samples. I have no problems with that as these bands and artists deserve all the support they can get, but these videos are extremely time consuming, so the best and the only way how you can support me is by buying my debut album. And if you like Iron Maiden, I think you're gonna like that record a lot as well. Have you heard this album already? If you have, you can let me know in the comment section below whether you agreed or disagreed with me. If you are an Iron Maiden fan, you can let me know how well do you think it compares to their other records, maybe which one is your favorite one. You can follow me on Facebook or on Instagram, you can find links to both in the description of this video below. Also, if you like this review, don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe. You can check out my own original music my live performances, my worst to best videos, including Iron Maiden as well, and quite a lot of other reviews and series as well. Thanks a lot for watching.